I think I was born competitive. Like since I was a little kid, like you could always challenge me to something. I'd always be be sprinting to the next lamppost, like trying to beat someone to it. Or if I didn't have anyone to play with, I'd just put a clock on the floor and just time myself in handstand and then, and then try to beat that time. I love the idea about CrossFit athletes uh, and how they were like, the ideal athlete is someone who can do everything, kind of like a super athlete, right? You run, bike, swim, lift weights, do gymnastics. It was, it was, it was cool to, to implement all of those things into one training methodology. Like this is my whole life. <laughs> like I wake up in the morning and I'm training, then uh, I'm coaching, then I'm training again, then I'm coaching. If I go to a party or something, everybody's asking me about CrossFit. And I think, so this is just my whole life now. When your goal is winning all year long and then you don't win, you don't meet your goal, it hurts, like it sucks. There's no getting around it. And there would still be a piece of me inside that even if I got second, I would be slightly upset, you know what I mean? And that's, that's just the way it goes when you're competitive, that's the way it goes when you're a competitor. It, it, it's a really big fear that, that even if everything goes picture perfect all year, training goes perfectly, uh, stay injury free, all the events go, go perfectly and they still don't get the results I want. It keeps me up sometimes um, thinking like, well, you're just not good enough. I think, I think that's a pretty big pill to swallow. The worst kind of feeling for me was the up and comes, there's a max clean and jerk and warming up, I couldn't even clean uh, 155, so 70 kilos. I couldn't even clean 70% of what I was capable of. And that was the worst that I'd felt. I felt deflated inside. It was kind of all the work that I've done, all the hard work, not qualifying for the games. I've worked so hard and I just, I saw my opens just fall away from me. This is the 2014 European Regional. 10 rounds for time of one rope climb and a sprint. Now the rope climb is legless, which makes it a whole lot harder than when you are allowed to anchor your feet on the way up the rope. Katrin David's daughter, who led after day one, had a disaster on event five, 24th place. In that event, she drops all the way down to seventh. It was heartbreaking to see what happened to David's daughter. She didn't just kind of die physically, like the strength of her forearms and pulling, but kind of mentally as well. She's just was on the ground, under the rope, still had time on the right. clock. No go again, and she is devastated. Right now, it probably feels like her world's coming apart. It was, I mean, it was heartbreaking. That's what, that's what I do all year. And, and um, that's, I wanted to go to the games. But thinking about it afterwards, I think it was the best thing that could have happened to me. Fourth and final heat, making their way onto the floor at the 2015 Meridian Regional. You can't be afraid of failures. I don't think you're gonna succeed in anything if you're afraid of failing at it. You gotta be willing to take the risk. She called her shot and she will finish it off. Katrine Davis on her. Oh man, she's got to be happy with that performance right there. That is amazing. You know how you should run your race? You have to run your race and you have to go out there and you have to execute it. Unreal, lightning quick. This is an incredible pace. Can he pull this off? I genuinely enjoy pushing myself, just seeing how far I can go. Finishing second on a broken foot? Are you kidding me? Sigmund's daughter, and that is a new event record. Of course I want to win it. Everybody wants to win it. <laughs> on the last bar, this is it. Can Bailey get an event record? I believe that I can do it. I know that I'm capable. I know that I'm good enough. It's just a matter of doing it. You're watching the event records fall by that man, Matt Fraser. I think about getting that title every day. That's why I show up to the gym every day, is thinking about getting the title of being called the fittest man on earth. What does it take to get to the CrossFit Games? Man, to get to the CrossFit Games, especially now, it takes a commitment that, that's hard for most people to fathom. To be an athlete at the CrossFit Games, you have to be among the most disciplined and committed individuals on the face of the planet. You, you don't know what you're gonna see, you don't know what you're gonna hit, you don't know what you're gonna have to do, so you have to prepare for everything. And this is the true way to build this, to build Batman to build this ultimate warrior. 
<laughs> just just to get to regionals, much less the CrossFit Games, is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Just to be the top 100 in the Open in your region. I don't care if you take dead last at the Games. If you walk onto the field having earned a spot to go to the Games, you are an untouchable cyborg of fitness. There's pressure, I feel like, on the Games athletes nowadays, like literally the day after the Games end for the next season. There's not a day where they're not turned on, where that, that goal of making it to the games isn't at the forefront of their mind. In lifestyle factors, these people are sacrificing a great deal. I can tell you that, that no matter how they're training, they're training a lot. These guys are dedicating multiple hours through, throughout the day, training and working on deficiencies and recovery. 365 days a year for the athletes that are already at that peak level. and for multiple years on end for the athletes that are trying to get there. If you're that dialed in like so far in advance, you can really, it can really crush you and you can be burnt out. I like to see when the athletes can still be a little relaxed, they can give themselves that time off. I was been trying to learn the whip and nene. This this one I have a hard I have a hard time with, but I can definitely <laughs> like one long thing or is this What part is of that? Shirt? Has that just been on there? Yeah. We gotta take it from the top or what? Does my hair still look good? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm Katrin Davis Sutter. My name is Ben Smith. My name is Annie Thoris Sutter. My name is Ragnar Sutter Simusutir. Jorgen Kalkumason. I'm Kara Webb from Brisbane. Noah Olsen. Brooke Ants. Lindsay Valenzuela. Samantha Briggs. Matthew Fraser. Camille Leblanc Besne. My name is Dan Bailey. I'm 20. I'm not 20, I'm 31. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we are on my boat, which is also my home, my residence. This is where the fitness happens, but there's not a lot of uh, snatching or a lot of high technical Olympic lifting going on out here. So Here at home, or when I'm in Iceland, I, I live with my grandparents. I've lived with them since I was like 16, so... Make me feel light as a feather for a whole day, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sam? Yep. What's happening? I'm just getting naked. <laughs> I'm getting cryogenically frozen. <laughs> we won't talk about the state of my nipples. My nipples are going to be so hard when I come out of here. They can cut diamonds right now. I think I'm cutting a hole in this booth <laughs> as I'm circling. You're not a car. Yeah, I kind of want a hairless cap, just to have one. No, I don't think, Marston, I would ever lotion my cat, but that's creepy and disgusting, and you shouldn't tell people you want to lotion a hairless cat. I would not know my own age if my parents and my wife did not tell me that it was my birthday. <laughs> I really wouldn't. I'm going to be one of those old people that just forgets how old he is. What are you guys doing? We're making an awesome slip and slide, bro. <laughs> America. <laughs> We're doing like a, a swim and run race. Like a mini biathlon. Game training. <laughs> Doing a mighty fine job, Matt. Thank you. Just in case you have to like tighten bolts or something in the middle of the workout. <laughs> you look like a like a narwhal. You look like a like smart. a narwhal with a magic uh, horn. Turn to the side for a second. Exactly like the movie Alien. To it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. it. Turns out a razor blade is better than me trying to pull it off with my fingernails. Well, if I'm at the HQ, I usually leave them on Tommy Marquez's desk. You know, occasionally just sprinkle them in his coffee. <laughs> Look, Carl. There you go. Hey. Good boy. In this, this past year and the year prior, um, Dave Castro got Instagram. <laughs> we introduced the Clean Speed Ladder. It was such a fan favorite that this year on Friday night, we're bringing it back. The games, we release some stuff ahead of time, but even the stuff we do release is, is usually, we're not filling in the blanks. There's still some question marks to what we release. This time with snatches. Last year, oh, they announced the workout for the individuals. 
Yeah. yeah. Murph. Murph. The first announced workout for the individuals at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games is Murph. You should probably do Murph. <laughs> without it, without fanfare, without any celebration, just put a little workout up on the site and let the chatter begin. Uh, maybe end it at 285. I still feel like I still feel I like think it's going to go heavy. Maybe the last round, 225, 245, 275, and then I don't even know. It's like 500 pounds on the last bar. I think I just I really love and have come to love the the feeling of success, right? To to look up there and see your girlfriend just super proud and see your parents cheering for you and your friends and family. And that's kind of why I strive to do better because I would always feel like I really let people down that came out to support me and want to see me succeed. This has probably been the only thing really in my life that I think I fully threw myself entirely into and I, I committed myself 100% to, to sort of make my mom and, and the rest of my family proud and to, to see it through and go, yeah, I, I really did kind of make something of myself. I think my favorite part of competing in CrossFit is like the sense of accomplishment. It doesn't matter what else I did in the day, like if, if I had a good day of training, I would leave here and like, okay, like I accomplished something today, like I bettered myself today. Every time I'm in the middle of the, the test and the event, I always have this moment that I ask myself, why, why am I doing this? This is really hard, this is ridiculous. And then once it's all over, you like can't wait to do it again. And I think that's the way we all feel about CrossFit in a day-to-day -day basis, right? You go to the gym like, my God, this is terrible. I'll come back tomorrow at six. And I think that's the feeling I have towards competing. For years, I never thought that I could ever be that, this caliber of an athlete. It seemed so out of reach. And it wasn't until when I watched the games in 2013 that I like told my friend that I was there spectating with, I want to do that. <laughs> and at that point, I didn't know if I could do it. Uh, but I was willing to try. The sport I did before CrossFit was uh, swimming the most, but I tried every sport. But I, yeah, I quit after maybe six months and everything. I didn't find myself in anything until I found CrossFit. I want to be the fittest on earth. <laughs> that if I can do it, everybody can do it because, yeah, I was a lazy, chubby girl who just started in CrossFit and now I'm going to the games, so. If you work hard, you can do it. Is this my last best chance to win the CrossFit Games? I think that I'm probably approaching the end of my individual career, but never say never. Yeah, I can podium. I think I can podium because I know that I'm good enough. I've won the Open before, I've won my regional. I think that gives me a, a fighting chance for sure, and this is what I train for all year round. It's, it's a long weekend. It's a long, grueling weekend. It's a long year. You can't go riding leaderboard roller coaster. Um, you can't be focused on other competitors if they're good at, good at this or that. Like, nothing, nothing of that is going to help you. It doesn't matter where you finish at regionals. All that matters is what happens on game day. You know, who can bring it when you go out there at the games? Who can be on every single workout and not, not show any weakness, not show any uh, sign of slowing down, that kind of thing? That's all that matters. You know, it just takes one week and you can, you can make your dreams happen. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a cool feeling. And then the fact that you finish fourth at regionals doesn't matter. Coffee is needed. We've got like three hours till we swim, so I don't know what we're up for. That's more than enough time to drink coffee. Poop. Poop. All Maybe night. poop a couple times. Get the pre wad poops out, yeah. everything. I'll be just right through the water then. Yeah, I'll be lighter on that board for sure. I really don't know how to feel about this event. I don't know how I'll place. Uh, I don't know if I'll be top 10 or bottom 10. I couldn't give you a guess. We're gonna try to go fast. Forcing ourselves to eat. Forcing ourselves to eat because we know we're gonna need it. I'm not hungry at all. <laughs> La mauvaise situation. Les gens ils savaient pas de quoi je parlais. Les paddle board. Puis là j'étais comme ok. Bon, qu'est-ce que je fais? Au plat, je sors. What's it called? Sunscreen. Sunscreen. 50 plus on. Uh, it was so cold that I had the hair dryer. I had the hair dryer to get up. because my bikini was still wet from yesterday, so I was standing there <laughs> trying to dry. So that morning. was our morning. <laughs> Alrighty.
when we're all lined up, we're all like getting ready to sprint to the water. All I'm thinking is like, shit, I suck at sprinting. Let's go, Frazier! CrossFit Games here at Hermosa Beach. Yeah, I, I had a front row seat to him just eating it. Yeah, he wiped out hard. I just ate it. Wow. There's feet in your face, you know, you can feel people right on your shoulders. It's legitimately like a fight for space. I ended up having to adopt a position where I was biting the front of the board to stop my chin from rubbing. I got a rest on my cheek. <laughs> it was burning my shoulder so bad holding my head up that I just said F it and put my head on the side of the board and just went. Looks like she is back. And Yom Koski smashing pier paddle. And that was when it was like game on and just hit the jets and we both inched back and forth. My legs started getting really heavy like cement blocks and I guess the same thing happened to him and I was able to hold it off for like two more steps. I remember he finished and walked up to me and I was laying on my back and I said, you big bastard. It's <laughs> 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 oh, really hard, man, really hard. <laughs> I like it though. This is hard work. I really like that. That's good, simple hard work. It's a great day to be an Australian at Hermosa Beach. Between the men and the women here, they pretty much dominated. I'm halfway back, and like, so my face is just on the board, and I'm paddling, and I just see Easy, like 100 yards out, wrong side, 100 yards out, all four limbs hanging off the board. <laughs> Not paddling, he's just laying there. I was like, come on, Easy, let's go. <laughs> yep. You got it, man. Yeah. You look good. Hey, Nick. Think we can assist each other? <laughs> hey, Scott, help me and I'll help you, bro. Oh, yeah. Let me go first. Oh, the okay, dude. You, you can take that place. Might be the one time in CrossFit where it pays to be a little bit taller. <laughs> yeah. Trying to throw those bags over the wall. Attempt number one, no judging. <laughs> The CrossFit Games moved to the StubHub Center in 2010. One of the events done that year, the sandbag move. We're doing it again in 2015. Tell everybody and welcome inside the tennis stadium at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. We did a long, grueling event this morning at the beach. This one is just all about pure work capacity. Doesn't have to be pretty. It just is all about getting the work done. It's just like a grind. It's just like who can work. It was way harder than it was in 2010, for sure. Just a pure test of work and work capacity. There's a lot of contrivances that we have in testing fitness and expressing the ultimate levels of power output. But this event, along with running, would probably be the least contrived things we can do. You just, you have objects and you have to move them from there to there. I think I was gonna go for like four in the beginning. It was like super aggressive approach. 
and I like was not ready to adjust it yet. So I was like trying to get them all through the stairs and I was hitting everything and it wasn't really working that well. I think the biggest thing, you have to be flexible. I think the biggest thing is that you have to keep your composure, take a deep breath and just not let yourself wig out. And that was Ben Smith, who I think made a bad decision is trying to do too much in the beginning. Took all the sandbags down and as soon as I lifted the wheelbarrow off the floor, it before I could even take one step, it just tipped over on me. And now Noah Olsen in lane four, his wheelbarrow has tipped over. It was pretty crushing. Like, in the moment, my heart kind of sank. As soon as you see panic set in and people get a little a little freaked out at something that didn't work, mentally when they go off the rails, it's really hard to get back after that. You know, the sandbags were all sloppy with the weight inside. First attempt at the last bag, fail. Just falls right back on my head. No big deal, that's fine. Go to it again. Bag fell off again. Didn't make it over the wall. Third try, bag still falls back in my face. At this point, I'm getting like, I'm furious. I'm incredibly frustrated because you're just not getting anything done. The clock is ticking, and every second in these workouts matters a ton. And with the 100 pound bag, it was so floppy, everyone's trying to figure out the right way to get the bag over. Some people are trying to like throw it like a kettlebell, like a keg toss or something. I grabbed the end of it stood it up on end to shake all the bags down into one end, flopped the loose end over, so it was pretty much just a 100-pound D-ball, picked it up, shot put it over. I did that once and made it look so easy, and Scott Panchak came over to me and was like, don't do that again. I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know that technique, I know that technique, but none of these other guys know it, so keep that between us. And I was like, Oh yeah, good call, okay. So I lunged, and then I took a step onto the sandbag and got the bags over the wall, like, super quickly. We didn't want anyone to figure that out because we knew a lot of the girls that who I had to beat, who were in standings ahead of me, were on the smaller side, on the shorter side, so I really needed to take advantage of that. Then I was still like in that mode, just like I need to keep on going, and I grabbed the red sandbag as, <laughs> as the first one, it was on the top there. <laughs> and started running up, and then I started hearing like, people yelling. I'm like, why are they so excited about this? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I have the wrong bag. There were two rules. The red one goes last down, the red one goes last up. And I was just too much in a hurry. <laughs> and Atonicliff is making quick work of those bags. But it is Lucas Holberg will set the new best time to beat, since she and Lutz going to demolish the time to beat Anna Dunnicliffe will be your new event leader. And Matt Frazier will finish second overall in Sandbag 2015. I don't know if Ben Smith has ever had an event he did not finish at the game. One of those athletes we thought were going to do well in this particular event. I think one of my strengths is I'm good at letting things go. So, you know, if I have a bad event, you know, that comes with experience. You just got to let it go. Next, move on to the next event. Just take it one event at a time throughout the whole weekend. So. Good job, buddy. Well, hey. Okay. 14th. 14th is not terrible. Yeah, 34th. Oh, 34th yeah. in that workout? Yeah. So you're not in a bad shape at all. Damn, dude. I didn't want anything outside of like top 10, 15. It's okay. Oh, it's devastating. You know what? Man, that hurts my heart. You know, this sort of odd, odd object event was it's fun. It's, you know, it's about finding your, your pain area and the dark place and getting in there. And... Yeah, I just ate baby food, so I'm yeah, really happy. <laughs> I love baby food. <laughs> this is the funnest part of competing. You can eat so much. <laughs> <laughs> How's that one? Oh, it's way too far. That was good. bird's eye view of the CrossFit Games, when you looked at Murph, there was an X factor. Everybody knew that it was going to be difficult, everybody knew that it was going to be hard, but not from the sense of, this is going to destroy. Um, and it really, in my opinion, did become a linchpin of the 2015 Games. It's a workout that is done every year on Memorial Day where we get to you know, honor those who've given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. Just let me go. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me go. It's not about the first one. Okay. It's gymnastics in the middle and then yeah. Yeah. Okay. 30 seconds back is so easily made up on a round of push-ups. I like this workout. Well, if I do it right, it should be all pretty hard. <laughs> oh, I said if I pass out, no one touched my vest. Because if your vest comes off, you're disqualified. 
I thought it was really cool to have Murph at the games. Murph was a turning point for many athletes because they approached it incorrectly for their particular work capacity. Okay, I was so stressed for Murph. Just, I thought that would be the worst event of the whole weekend. Very quickly, I want to tell you guys something. This is the start of the weekend for you guys. The start of a big weekend. But this workout is something special. It's bigger than this weekend. It's to celebrate those who've given their lives in the of our country and the world, essentially. So let's celebrate that. Remember that while you're doing that. Let's bring it in. March! March! When you do a hero workout, you're always pushing so hard for the, for the hero and, and to honor somebody. And I think what that did, it jacked them up to a whole other level that they weren't ready for and they weren't used to. They were already there themselves, and then Dave just pushed them over the limits. And I think they just took off way faster than they should have. As soon as they said go, everybody converged, and it got a little, got a little nasty. People were like grabbing vests and throwing elbows. I, I was guilty of kind of like not throwing anybody to the ground, but definitely trying to work my way through the crowd. I really wanted to get out ahead and take advantage of the run. Sam Briggs thought she missed something in the briefing, that there was, that there was 100 points available for the first 400 meters of the run, because people were going so damn fast. I felt like I was melting after the first 800 meters. Uh, at the 800 mark, there was a water station. That I was the only person who stopped at the water station. Uh, it wasn't to take a drink of water. I just picked up a cup to throw up my head to keep me my temperature down. Look at the pacing that they have. That's a six minute mile pace right out of the gate. That could be dangerous. Another That's a lot. That's really fast. Starting the pull ups, I like had a, a bottle of water and I was like pulling it over me and I was like, no, my grits, they're all wet. <laughs> my legs were blown up. My heart rate was through the roof. I had a little water bottle. I kept pouring it down my neck to try to cool off. And I had the black vest, too. Like, didn't get any oxygen, and everything was so warm. This is the last time the ladies will be in the shade, because the only shade on the field is being provided by this mountain of steel. It was so hot. I mean, it was just the, the on the field, that dry, hot air in your face. You couldn't escape it on the grass. I mean, 2013, it was hot. Every year is hot. I think the heat was kind of comfy because, uh, you know, you don't get that in Iceland. I get down to the gym and I'm like freezing to death. And this was just nice, actually. It's proving the fittest in the world and sometimes things aren't gonna necessarily be the safest. You have to go into competition not being afraid of something bad happening, but being responsible for yourself and preparing yourself as well as you can. I don't think you'd expect to see people nearly blacking out and passing out and suffering so badly through it because this is something that they've done. They've all done this. And for whatever reason, you put them at the games in that setting and it just wrecked people. And I still cannot figure out why it was that tough on them. Halfway through the push-ups, I just started feeling a little like lightheaded. I did doubles on push-ups and like, they're hard. Not my proudest moment as a fitness competitor. <laughs> got to the squats, I got through my first 100. Like every 15, my whole world would just kind of start to close in. I'm like, yeah, this is it. Like, I am going to fall face first onto this field. Like, I'm going to pass out. This is going to be so embarrassing. And someone's going to start pulling me off the field, and I'm going to have to fight them to keep going for the event. I couldn't, I couldn't find a rhythm in the air squats and I think that's one of the only parts of the weekend that I was like, all right, Katrine, come on, get a grip, like, this is it, this is the games that you're ever pushed, like, push now. And... So it's no secret, it was hot as hell during Murph. So I'm doing my air squats and I see a water bottle in my lane. It wasn't mine. I see Bosman walking by, which I pointed to him, pointed to the water bottle, pointed to me. And was like, hmm? Castro comes over to me and tells me, Nope, we can't bring you the water bottle. That cooler is full of ice water. If you want to stop your workout, go over there and get a bottle of water. You're allowed to do that. And then you can come back. I was like, that f is trying to get me to quit. I was like, he's giving me one of these buds tests. And like, if I go get a cup of water, he's gonna, he's gonna kick me out. So I was like, f that, I'm gonna keep going. A little different Annie than we're used to seeing. Doesn't have as much of that recklessness that we used to see, but she still has the fire. She just seems more composed. There's always gonna be a situation where you're gonna be pushed to a limit that you've never 
you've never found before. There's gonna be a test you've never run into before. There's gonna be a certain level of uncertainty and doubt in your head where you're like, I don't know. Can I do this? I'm gonna sure as hell give it a, a shot, but I'm not sure I'll be able to do this. Got through the squats and I was like, starting to like have a little blurry vision and my legs were soft and couldn't really move them. I was like, I knew that the beginning of the run was gonna feel hard. I was like, it's okay that it's gonna be hard. I'm just gonna push through that wall but I just couldn't push through that wall. The moment when I realized that I could win Murph was when I started doing the air squats. I was doing huge sets and, you know, wasn't feeling too tired. I was actually just recovering. He was just up and down like a piston, took the lead, and now he looks unstoppable. I rounded the corner and I couldn't believe how many guys I saw. Just, I saw like hands on their head, just marching down that mile and I'm like, this is unbelievable. The woman's unreal. She blew the field out of the water in the women's division. She should have done that next to the men and she probably had a chance of beating the top man in that division. I had no idea until the turnaround point at the 800 mark, like what sort of lead that I had. I knew that I was the first off the squats, but I wasn't sure like how far behind anybody else was. It was pretty awesome because everybody had been in the stadium waiting for us to come back. So as soon as you, like one by one, as each person entered, it felt like the crowd kind of erupted to see everybody come back in. I remember running into the stadium and like looking around and I'm like, did I miss a movement? Like, did I skip something? Because I'm not supposed to be this high, this much in front. That was very weird. Gubinson will take event number three, Murph, Samantha Briggs, and she will win. Briggs would have finished second in the men's division with that time. <laughs> wow. I remember I was trying to pass Kara, and she was kind of like swiveling. At the time, I thought she was swiveling so that I wouldn't pass her, but it turns out that, that she was almost unconscious too. So it was kind of, that was a little bit scary. And and then it was just chaos at the finish line. Under, take it off! Take it off! People rolling around everywhere, trying to find shade, dumping water on their heads, just trying to peel their vests off. And everybody kept asking, can we leave? Like, are we allowed to leave? Do we have to stay here? I mean, California wasn't, I did not think of it as a hot environment or a, you know, a challenging environment because of the heat. And this year it was like, it was especially hot, especially in the sun, just sitting out there, uh, feeling like you're in a microwave, you know, you're just cooking while you're sitting on the field trying to do push-ups and air squats. Um, I think it compares, you know, Murph was, that was one of the hardest workouts that I've had to do at the games. I wouldn't pass out during Murph because if it started to hurt really, really bad, I would slow down a little bit because I don't want to be in that much pain. <laughs> and so I wouldn't fall unconscious, but you have people so mentally tough, like Kara Webb or others that will hit that point that I would hit and go like, whoa, I'm going to slow down, and she doesn't. These athletes just push themselves right to the limit. It's, it's their heart and soul into the workouts. I have never seen Annie Thor's daughter look like this at any event ever at the CrossFit ever. Games. That's what they wanted to do. They put their heart and soul into it. And I just hope that they, that they would recover. Glassman says men will die for points, right? So, I mean, it makes the workout a lot tougher when, when it's such a long time domain and so many reps and it's hot out and you're in, you're in a vest, you're in an uncomfortable situation. It takes a toll on some people. So, I mean, that was definitely one of the, one of the harder workouts that I've ever had to do at the games. They didn't really recognize my body in a way because I always said, you're head is going to give up before your body does. And my head was fine. <laughs> How you doing? You can walk your good end. <gasps> I'm sorry. You're fine. You're good. good. It's important for us to test long events at the CrossFit Games. And perhaps one of the reasons that it was as hard on these athletes as it was, was because they're not tackling Murph and training with the same intensity and race strategy that they would with shorter workouts like Fran, or Jackie, or a speed clean ladder. All right, let's clean up. 
And for a lot of athletes, if you were going to ask them their Fran time, they can tell you within one second. Same thing with Jackie. But if you ask them the Murph time, there's probably a little hesitation, and I bet you they give you an answer within a minute or a couple minutes. So when you take a workout like Murph, which is already long and hard, and you ask these athletes to race against the toughest competition they've ever been against, I don't think they've optimized their game plan the same way they have for shorter workouts. It was really good, but it's really hot. Didn't expect this. It's good. I'm here for the money, man. It's the hardest thing that I've ever done. The only positive about it is that I got a tan while I was doing it. <laughs> Always pick at the price side. Both get some rings. Just the two best friends in the whole world. <laughs> We're the two best friends that anyone can have. Something like that. How was that? Oh, there we go. That was hell. Woo! What was that compared to last year? Like triple threes? Way worse. That was worse than triple threes? Way worse. It was so hot. And around number eight on the pull ups, I realized. I don't have any water. I was talking with China Joe and like, especially after this workout, people are gonna start getting real hurt. People are still loving me and huh? I mean, people are still cheering me on and it's great. <laughs> it's a rougher start, but it's funny how things happen. Like, you know, some really, really great athlete did, did not so good in that event. and. For me, I got 15, and last year in the long event, I got 17, so I guess I got a little fitter there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, that's good, right? Yeah. Convince yourself that it's okay, but if you do it and it doesn't affect you, now I can go to the snatch ladder feeling like kind of confident. Yeah. But if I let it affect me, then maybe I wouldn't do so good in an event that I should do good. Yeah. I know. This has been a month long project, Ian. <laughs> if you will it, Donnie, it is no dream. I'm still having fun, but some good competitors. Some young bucks. Puppies. Hey. So, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna finish. Can you just tell me like a timeline? I'm like, I don't know how long I've been in here. I don't know. Yeah. Really good. She's okay. She just wants to. I think she wants to talk about it. We haven't got time. We haven't got time for that. I wasn't able to stand on my two feet by myself until 30 minutes before I had to go out to the floor. No, let's go up. Okay, we're lining up. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, God, you did me. I'm like, oh, man, I need more shower. Did you stand on that responsibility? Yeah. No, it's not mine. No, 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 This is your thing now. Yeah, this is your thing. Come on. Don't think about it, really. Next event, Yeah. I don't know. I just feel really emotional. There's a million things going through my mind. Just lying on a stretcher in that room and not, yeah, I don't know. I was just worried I was gonna let everybody down. And uh, I just, yeah, time, I didn't I didn't know what happened. And, and then I'm just next minute racing down and lift a couple of barbells and then just go out and see what I can do. So yeah, I've, I've worked the hardest that I've ever worked this year. And Brian said this is just a speed bump, so. I'll do whatever I can. I've, I've come this far. This is emotional. After Murph walking straight to the snatch ladder, I did not know how it was going to go. To me, there is nothing better than the tennis stadium on a Friday or a Saturday night when the lights are out. Uh, the tennis stadium's insane. Night or day, doesn't matter. Being inside the tennis stadium is like taking 
the 13,000 gyms around the world, all their members, voracious CrossFit fans, and putting a magnifying glass on top of them. So competing in a tennis stadium is probably the best feeling ever. When I think of the CrossFit Games, that's what I think about. Everybody talks about the tennis stadium and just like, it's unreal. It was just so unreal when I was walking to the tennis court. I was like, okay, wow, I've been watching this for two years and now I'm here and everybody's cheering for me. And you walk through the huge crowd of, it's, it's every seat is filled, people are standing and you walk into there and it just like, it feeds the athletes. As soon as they get onto that floor, they can just feel everybody right there. They're close. Like your ears hurt after, the lights are shining on you. And the music's going and it's just, it's close corner, so you feel like you're back in a gym setting with thousands of people watching you. So much energy and positive energy from everybody watching. You've got this tiny space, fairly steep seating on each side, so you feel like the fans are absolutely on top of you. It kind of feels like they're all over you and they're all with you. It'd be like being in the Coliseum, you're gonna slide the door open, there may be lions, there may be five dudes with swords, you have no idea what's coming at you. Just the feeling of completing a workout in the tennis stadium at night when the lights are on you. That's when I decided that I wanted to make CrossFit my sport. That's where the fun is. That's where the most pain is. That's where the most fun is. It makes the energy like electrified. For the athletes at tennis stadium, is, it, it makes a lot of extra stuff happen. And I remember before we had done anything else, I was like, I wish it was a little bit heavier. <laughs> it didn't need to be any heavier. <laughs> I love snatching, and snatching with adrenaline, it's the best ever. Snatch Speed Ladder did not go as well as I wanted it to. I got spat out of my first snatch. <laughs> In a movement like a snatch, it's all about your technique. If it's gone, you can, I mean, it's so easy to miss a lift. It's not just about what your one rep back, it's about how you're able to compose yourself to have that controlled speed and explosiveness, but being in position at the same time. Every bar counts. You, know, you gotta make sure you hit every single lift. Dick your rank cars off to a savage pace. And Michelle and Hall at 150 will clear that. Man, it's just fun to watch people with some steel, man. In that atmosphere of the games, in, in competition, under the lights, when the pressure's on, people do amazing things. The best feeling in the world when you hit a good snatch. You just pull it and then the next thing is just to like throw yourself under as fast as you can and you're like, you don't know where the bar is and like, if you catch it in a perfect precision and you're sitting there with the bar and you know that you got it, it's like the best, it's the best feeling in the world. It was like a blink of an eye to get to the first couple rounds. No time to think, you just had to go. Yeah, Easy knocked himself out cold. He was like, I woke up looking at the sky. He was like, I got knocked out during that lift. Hit himself in the head with the barbell, and he is on the floor. Adrian Bosman, the head judge, is coming over to check on Elijah. Camille LeBlanc, Bosnian, sets it down. No reps now twice on the opening bar, and Camille is in severe danger of advancing to round two. Oh, that is so upsetting for Camille. Looks like he just needed to walk to collect his thoughts. He only has 30 seconds. That should be good enough for one more attempt at this. The crowd behind Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad is in. She is feisty on fire. Ben Smith first to the last part. He will get across. Fighting for first place. Hulk will hit 155. David Zotter will hit 155. It's a race to the finish. I loved watching Brooke Entz just bring her energy through the entire thing. Brooke Entz and the Orange will hit that, and Brooke Entz, if she clears 180, will have 100 points in her pocket. Oh. Entz can't hang on to that. Brooke Entz has company on that final barbell. and set up for her second attempt. David Sutter set up for her first. And Brooke Entz will hit that. And the rookie gets her first career victory at the CrossFit Games. You have 
have Matt Fraser, you have Ben Smith, you have Elijah Muhammad, and one by one we see them all miss an attempt. And Ben Smith faces down the 275 pound bar. He hits this before anybody else. He wins the event. Oh, wow. And slowly but surely, John Para takes a little bit of extra time in his setup, takes a little bit of extra time walking to each barbell. And before you know it, John Para 275. And John Para coming from behind, and he will win the Snatch Speed Ladder. And it was definitely a, a moment where you got to see a nice blend of strength, skill, and strategies well come into play, and I think that's what the goal of the workout was, and he, and he played it beautifully. Uh, I'm afraid I have to be faster. I'm really afraid I have to be faster. Oh. I've just gotten so much better at Snatch, and I'm not getting to show it. I promised myself that I wouldn't, like, it wouldn't be over until it's over this no, year. That's it. Like, I'll just keep, it, it really is one at a time. Yep. I was one, move on, just another one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so pumped. I'm so fired up right now. How'd it go? You know, I think one of the coolest is, you know, the next time my name, next time they call me out, it's going to say best finish, first place. Uh, bombed. Whatever. Just keep working out. Yeah. Doing it. I got the over. I got the over. Yeah, you can like, you can file and what happened to you, but... My judge kept no repping me for no Camille definitely wears her emotions on her sleeve. And I think that's what makes her endearing to our community. You can actually feel what she's experiencing in the moment. She's not all smiles. She's not gonna throw you a fake wave. Okay. Uh, okay. No. You show me that pretty smile? Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to give her I'm gonna try. You show me that pretty smile and you'll feel better again, I promise. And in that case, she was devastated. She could see that her chance of repeating as games champion was slipping through her fingers. My heart is just really sad. I don't mind when things are a little bit unfair because it kind of always is because I have more eyes on me. But... But there's a certain amount of unfairness that I can take, and that was, that was too much. Friday evening final event will be the Hero Workout DT. When he announced DT, I was happy. Because it's like, there's no strategy. If you let go of the bar, you've already lost. You have to just grab the bar, not even think about letting go, and just be ready for your lungs to bleed. I love barbell work, so I'm not going to complain, but DT is a, a brutal workout. Right, this, this is, is the cross of the game, game right? We are going to do something we've never done before. We are going to get all of you involved and all of the fans and viewers at home. Here's how. You can vote for double DT, 10 rounds for these athletes to do, or heavy DT, five rounds at 205 or 145 for the women. What you guys do tonight will be decided by the CrossFit community. I, I don't know, I like, kind of like it both. I love DT is one of my favorite workouts. That's right. But um, I've never done a heavy and I've never done a 10 rounds. You are able to go. Still barbells. I'm going to go first. Okay, let's go heavy. That's my mind. I want it heavy. Heavy. <laughs> well, heavy or double. I don't mind. I love DT. That was when he announced DT. It didn't matter if it would be 10 rounds or heavy DT. It was good for me. Everybody vote. Double. <laughs> One of the coolest moments for me was getting to involve the community in the programming. 
actually having them cast a vote and selecting Heavy DT made that workout even a little more special. The sun's going down and the lights are going up. The people have spoken. Heavy DT is what our individual athletes will be doing tonight. Yeah, I did a 155 after the open, and I did that in like eight minutes. When I heard it was going to be 145, I had done heavy DT at 155. It was on main site, so I had done that. I was like, that's interesting that they're doing a heavy DT on main site. Like, why? You always look at main site. If you're not, if you're an athlete and you're not looking at main site workouts, you're not intelligent because a lot of those movements appear either at the open regionals or the games. So you've got to pay attention to main site. When they announced 145, and I'm like. I did it at 155, like bring 145, like whatever. I knew if it was heavy, a lot of girls would have a hard time with the shoulder to overhead. So I knew I would make some bank on that movement. So I was hoping for heavy DT. Thank you everyone for voting for heavy DT. Double DT would have annihilated people. As if everyone wasn't hurting bad enough for Murph, throw in another 120 deadlifts at 155, 90 hand cleans, and 60 shoulder to overhead would have just, oh my gosh. It would have been ugly. <laughs> it would have been really bad. I love barbell workouts, and this was just a barbell workout, so I was very happy. <laughs> a lot of these women have done DT before. They know how it feels. A lot of grip because they go fast and they want to hold on. This being 40 pounds heavier, you're going to see them break this up a lot more. DT is one of my favorite workouts ever. Annie was right next to me to my right, so at one point I was like, she's moving this barbell so fast. And I'm like, I'm moving as fast as I can. But Annie Thor's daughter, she is one that when you're side by side, she will fight hard. What matters the most was the push jerk, to do that on Brogan. Because if you break the push jerk, you have to clean it again and then start again. So. Can she hold it though for all six? She's going to try. One to go for Thor's daughter. It went okay, but like I was feeling jerks. Like, and she cannot hold it. One of my strongest moments. <laughs> That's kind of my rule. If I get it to my shoulders, I will get it overhead. I had like completed a round. I don't even remember. This is at the point where slobber's coming out again. I like out of nowhere just started doing some extra hand cleans, I guess. And my judge is yelling like, put it down. Like put the bar, no, like no rep. Like put the, you're not on hand cleans. Like you're, you're on deadlifts, roll the bar forward. I'm like, all right, I don't even know what was going on. I just rolled it forward and started deadlifting again. <laughs> I remember going out, and I, I took the first set. Like, I paused after the deadlifts, then did, did the hang power cleans, and went about it like that. And I dropped the bar, and I looked at the clock, and it was at a minute 20. I went, ah, oh, shit. That was too fast, and this is about to get painful. If you think just about what their shoulders have gone through, starting back on Wednesday with the swim and the paddle, but the overhead at that 145, you're seeing a much different DT than we would had this been 105. They would be easily be able to hold that overhead for all six. It did. I went way too fast in that first round. It got really painful. And like, I'm right next to Ben Smith. So I mean, talk about chasing a fit person. I think people probably thought that because it was heavier and because it had a barbell that Matt Fraser was gonna be the guy that would win that event. Ben Smith goes out and just works his way through each round. Doesn't slow down, never looked like he was out of control. After the third round, I wanted to break the push jerks up, but I was like, no, just stick to it. There's only 12 reps left of push jerks. She's here to go against the test. She's not just here to compete against the woman. She came literally to play. She's not just here to participate. The thing that surprised me the most about Sarah was her composure in that event. I think it would be very easy, especially for a younger athlete, and we saw this at some of the other events, to go out and run someone else's race, not your own. And it seemed that Sarah had a plan, she executed it, and all of a sudden, she's out front. She's not letting go of that barbell. Two to go, one for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. But like the last push jerk, it was so hard. <laughs> I just closed my eyes and I was like, please, please go under it. <laughs> and there's a new Icelandic CrossFit queen here at the game. And it's Sarah Sigmund's daughter. During the last round, I, I had to put the bar down and wait, and then Ben just like plowed through the last round. I kind of went, shit. 
Ben Smith, the first man to the fifth and final round of Heavy DT. We're going into the last round of the workout. You know, you can see the finish line. You know, all you got to do is finish the last set, and you, you know, you can win it. It's uh, it's motivating, and then you hear the crowd get into it. And it's just pushes you to a different level that you kind of never, never get to experience during training. It's, it's a lot of fun. And Ben Smith dominated that event so much that he actually walked to the finish line. Wow. Ben Smith wow. is going to win the heavy DT. Wow, he doesn't even look tired. Right at that moment, we knew all of a sudden that, OK, he's for real. and He has a legitimate shot at standing atop the podium. Fun day today. Uh, I mean, this weekend I came here to win, so I came here to finish first. And uh, you know, I told myself that seven years ago. I came here to came here to win, and I'm not gonna stop till I do. So I'm just gonna keep pushing. Yeah, I love DT. <laughs> you feel tired right now? No. Yeah. Just hungry. Yeah. I want to eat pizza, <laughs> and then I want to go relax and come here tomorrow and sprint. Yeah. I'm gonna get my west now and eat pizza. Sarah Sigmund's daughter with five for five and top 10 finishes leading the points race. The leaderboard starting to take shape. Matt Fraser on top. Hey, we're allowed to cut our jerseys like that? I'm saying that looks good. I couldn't pull that off. I already have too many tattoos everywhere. I want a belly shirt. <laughs> 2013, I wanted to win that event so bad and I slipped uh, in the final heat. You can always tell, you can tell immediately, at least I can in races like that, whether or not you've won or lost. And I want to win. I'm a sprinter. Like, I'm supposed to win those things. This is my chance to make up ground. It's the fastest event we'll see at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. So fun. So fun and terrifying. You don't see that maximum effort very often, and I love that because you can just three, two, one, go, just let it rip, 100%, go all out. Shout out like a cannon out of my start. As soon as I hit straight away, turbo boost, hard as I can run, turn over as fast as I can. Look at the explosiveness and the speed of Dan Bailey. The old specs started bobbling a little, and they kind of came down to here, and then it was on the third one that they just, boom, just popped off midair. Grabbed him in midair, tucked him away, kept running. Toomey and Holda neck and neck, it's Holda out first. Barber leading the way by a healthy margin. And it's going to be Dan Bailey across the finish line. Across the finish line, knew that I won and was just so jacked. I was so pumped. Day three was terrible for me. It was great for other people. It was the stuff that I was terrible at. Oof, that was, the sprint course was my worst event. I just remember running and being like, everyone's so fast. Oh my God. Horrendous, I got two fouls every sprint. I'm not the fastest sprinter. I'm like, give me a 10K and I am fine. A hundred meter sprint now. Finished the event and then I asked my ref, I was like, did I knock over all the pylons? He's like, no, you hit them all. You only knocked over one though. I was like, oh, thank God. It sucked. I f***ed up. What happened? I'm not a good sprinter, and then I kicked over a hurdle. So, insult to injury. It was like somebody had just walked up to me and smashed me in the face. <laughs> Going into that event, I think Sarah Sigmund's daughter had finished inside the top 10 every event. Now all of a sudden you just ask her to run down the field and zigzag a little bit and jump over some obstacles and she had a terrible time doing it and it cost her. If you weren't competitive, you wouldn't be getting upset about it. You get pissed off about it at first and then you move on because you have to focus on the next task at hand. When I went to the athlete area, I was like, okay, you can start crying about this event and just like let it ruin the next event for you or you can just stop thinking about it and just keep on going. Matt Fraser lost a little bit of that lead after our two sprints as Ben Smith moves in that second place position. So I was disappointed with myself, but it was just like, whatever that event's done, time to move on to the next one, which ended up being even worse. 
this big pig is six and a half feet long, 560 pounds. I didn't know how the pig would go. It was heavy, but it was awesome. Um, I love the pig flip. That gave a lot of girls a lot of trouble. It was heavy. This is the first time that these athletes have dealt with this object. But this pig is heavy. And some of these ladies are going to struggle to even get one flip on this thing. Man, the pig was heavy. <laughs> ah, that fing pig. I had to legitimately use all my might every single flip to get that thing over. Every push felt like a max effort bench press off of my chest. Everyone told me, they're like, oh, dude, the pig's so easy. And they told me, they're like, whatever you do, don't stop the pig at your hip and do a curl. What did my dumbass do 12 times? I had to like deadlift it to my hips, rest it there, shimmy it up onto my shoulders, lift it onto my face, get my hands under to walk it <laughs> over. I'm holding the pig up and both of my knees are on the floor and I had to like press it over my head and step out of the lunge and push it over from there. Spencer Handel. Wow. This may, have be, may as well what? be an empty cardboard box. I think they forgot to put the cement in his or something because he's making that look way too easy. I'm watching Ben just like, boop, boop. And all I'm thinking, I was like, how the f is he doing that? So after the event, I went up and talked to him. He was like, oh, dude, the pig was easy. It's just like flipping a tire. In all my time I've spent in the gym doing fitness, I never flipped a tire. We didn't think it would get faster wow. than Spencer Hendel, but here comes are, Ben Smith. Are you kidding me right now? Ben Smith will win the soccer chipper. We thought that this was going to crush people, and they made it look like a walk in the park. And we look back, and here's Matt Fraser just can't get up the rope and can't get up the rope and keeps failing and keeps failing. Meanwhile, Matt Fraser, the overall leader on his legless rope climbs, he was ahead of Ben Smith by 52 points, and Smith is going to cut into that lead significantly because Matt Fraser is struggling. So when Matt Fraser bombed the soccer chipper, I remember watching that at the desk, you know, scribbling in my little notepad. I'm like, what is going on down there? Like, it's, uh, do we find a, a weakness in his game? What the heck? As Matt Fraser continues to struggle on the legless rope climbs, and this is going to change the leaderboard significantly. And that was a huge turning point. And it was a turning point for both those two. Ben wins it and just demolishes it, and Matt just flails and wasn't able to get up the rope. He just came off of two bad events with the sprint. He can't afford to have another one. The thing that's pissed me off the most of anything from the games is people telling me, don't worry, man. Keep working on your legless rope climbs. You'll get better. Yeah, man, go f yourself. <laughs> My legless rope climbs are fine. That pig my world up and I did so many heavy ass curls with the pig my arms were jello and Matt Fraser will not be wearing that white leaders jersey in the next event Ben Smith most likely will be reminded me of like a little kid when they're trying to hit you and the person puts their hand on their head and just holds them far away like yeah <laughs> That was me trying to climb that rope. Rolls out of the hands, and Elizabeth Akinwali is across the finish line, setting the new top mark at 840.94 seconds. And then I got one of the handstand walks and, like, stopped about this far from the second handstand walk. Only 13 seconds to go for Samantha Briggs. I'm not good at doing a handstand hold. I, I held a handstand for a long time, and I could not get my body to move forward. Briggs has got to get to her nameplate before she kicks down, oh! and she will not make it just about six inches short. I was like, I was there. I didn't fall down, and I was like, come on, just one more step. But I, I couldn't get the last step. Samantha Briggs so close to completing the soccer chipper.
I don't think I went too fast on the pig. I think I hit the first two rope climbs too fast. What are you going to do? Just ice and relax? Yeah. Uh, then see how I feel for the clinic jerks go from there. That workout sounds like it's a good one for me. Just, I, I've, I've never, ever had a failure happen like that. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think there's too much to miss it. Well, good luck. After that many bad events in a row, you start questioning everything. All I was questioning was, am I fit? Like, am I supposed to be here? After eight events, there is another change atop the leaderboard. Ben Smith has moved himself 30 points ahead of Matt Fraser. Sigmund's daughter and David's daughter continue to play hot potato with the points lead, currently held by the rookie Sarah Sigmund's daughter. I'm happy. I got to wear the leadership a little bit. Um, do you want to get this on camera while it lasts? <laughs> Still like a day and a half left. Lots left. Pumped about the clean and jerk until I started warming up for it. So warming up for the clean and jerk, missed 315. I, can't, I failed like 295, like three times in the warm up area. And not like it was a bad rep, I was just trashed. Well, clean and jerk is my favorite movement, but I was so tired after Murph. I remember feeling so sore before that event. It was hot and it was bright and I was like, we were trying to be in the shade, but I was so, I felt lightheaded and tired after like, and, and these are my warm up sets. So I was nervous, I was like thinking of myself, I didn't say anything out loud, but I was like, oh my God. And I remember loading on the weights and I was like, I can't not load on three blues. I was like, I'm known as a weightlifter. I can't not open with three blues. I was thinking to myself as I was changing my weight, like, oh my God, like, do you really want to go for this? 242. I think that's really close to your one rep. You just hit 245 for the first time. Your one rep max squat clean is 250. Your one rep max jerk is 250. And I can't stand it when it's quiet when I'm going to lift. Like, if people are going nuts and cheering and going crazy, like, that just helps me a ton. I love it. One person going at a time, so spotlight's on you. It's just that adrenaline rush. I honestly just thrive on adrenaline and, and the energy there. And that's when I, like, last minute, was like, I asked my judge, I'm like, oh my god, can I borrow your sunglasses? Because I had remembered the 227. That was one of the things that made it feel so off, was I just couldn't see. It was so bright down there in the middle of the arena. He's like, sure, and gave me his sunglasses, and it was my turn. I got set, and I set my, my body tighter than I'd ever set it before, and was not going to fail that rep. And once I cleaned it, I knew that if I was patient, that I could jerk it. I literally just thought to myself, like, what the hell? Go for it. The overall standings after nine events, Ben Smith and Matt Fraser are duking it out for the top spot on the leaderboard. There are doubts all the time. You get hurt, you get injured, you get tweaked. You're like, I don't know if I can do this. I, I don't, you know, you get frustrated, you get upset. Uh, you know, you're a little scared, you're a little nervous. Yeah, it happens all the time. It's, uh, it's an injury I've had for about a, a month and a half now and uh, it got real as soon as I got here. Hurting. Yeah? Oh yeah. What do you mean? I'm sore. Everywhere. I just had to go, you know, like, I, we knew it was gonna happen. Cause when I tried to tape them too much, I couldn't get, I couldn't grip the bar. Legs, lower back, shoulders, everything. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in a state of delirium. The roper, <laughs> I have them on like both, both sides. So I'm <laughs> some wounds. No, my my foot's 
pretty hurt. My back hurts, my plantar fasciitis hurts, my arms are killing me. I just feel weak. I'm just underperforming like crazy. I don't remember the last time I failed a clean and jerk at 211. I'm in the bottom of the pack right now and I came in here fully contending to fight for, you know, top 10 to be in the final heat. And uh, they're, they're just better than I am. Just one week out of the year, you know? It's not uh, not the rest of my life. Just gotta focus on this week, give all my effort to it, and then move on after that. I did believe that if I would do everything that I could do, I stood a really, really good shot at winning the games. And it's, of course, it's sad when I, when I see that kind of just go away. You tell me. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Not unless some miracle and I start recovering really fast and manage to win the rest of the events. <laughs> um, of course, I'm hoping I'm gonna wake up better tomorrow. And I'm never gonna give up. I think that's a hard misconception as some people look at the extraordinary things that go on here and people make them look so easy. Like you have no idea how bad that hurt for somebody to do that, you know? The pain doesn't just go away. It's like, it's not like they don't feel the pain. I already want to come back. Even though I know how much it hurts. Love it. Like, think about the people that would love for the opportunity to walk out in front of all these people and uh, would kill for an opportunity to do just one workout. So, you know, the way I look at it is, I'm not coming off that floor until someone's dragging me off of it. There is a couple moments that really stood out to me. Um, my family, my friends, and my, you know, my business partners were right at the edge to my left, right next to my lane. And I remember finishing the workout and staring up at them and just like having tears coming out of my eyes because they were just so excited to be there and so proud of me. They didn't care where I was, where I ended up and just making eye contact with them was just probably something I'll never forget as long as I'm alive. So that was probably the best moment. Yeah. It means a lot. <clears throat> I mean, I, th I feel like I could be last on the leaderboard and everybody would still be standing up and clapping for me, so that means a lot for me. It's like one of the coolest feelings. Coming back from four incredibly disappointing events, I'm, this one's gonna hurt. I'm gonna make this one hurt so bad. I, I think I told him, I was like, I'll die before I lose this workout. As Matt Fraser is trying to reclaim what he lost in the soccer chipper, the overall lead from Ben Smith. I'm real impressed with Matt Fraser, how he is attacking this event. No need to pace here. There's no strategy here. Just go. And Galen just selling out to get herself ahead. Camille LeBlanc Bazine sets the new mark to beat David's daughter and Webb are gaining ground now on Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And strap yourselves in for an exciting final day at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games as Fraser takes the event. What happened? I knackered myself. Oh, so I hit myself in, yeah. hit myself in the nuts <laughs> on, the, on the bar. I can feel it now. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is the hardest games I've been to. This is this is tough. This is just brutal hard work, and it's kind of cool though. Like we've got all the girls here, like they've all the past champs, and and like just the level of girls is just constantly going up. So the competition is fierce, and that makes you have to fight. Like there's no just cruising through, and you're good, and you can kind of just make it now. Like it's it's a, a fight, you know, to the end. So yeah, it's uh, 
it's good to see, but I'm tired. <laughs> There's one more day, I just, I just need to keep my head in the game, keep doing what I've been doing, and um, I hope it'll pay off. We know the morning event, I'm super stoked for that running and yoke, and then we don't know anymore, so I'm excited to find out. It's so funny, no matter how you do, you always want to do a little better, right? Like, I came in second, I shouldn't be upset, but I really wanted to get, like, I feel like with how it went down, I could have gotten first. Third, third, and second so far. Yeah, I have a shitload of seconds. Yeah. And then... You gotta walk. Seconds kind of suck, right? Oh, seconds like suck I was, a lot. I know. Dude, I was just thinking, God damn it, if I would have hung on to the bar, I would have beat that little bastard, and I would have been first. So close. Seconds suck a lot. Seconds suck a lot. What did you say, Captain? I didn't say anything. <laughs> second place. No, it's like, it's the worst, best finish. It's like you. You're the f winner of losers. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, if I, if I have to get introduced as the second fittest man, oh my. Oh. I, I want. I want that to f end now. I hate it. I'll quit complaining. Sunday morning, I woke up and said, "Holy guacamole!" Like I was, I was pretty smoked. You know what I f***ing dreamt last night? Well, the final workout was Murph. I slept real well. My knees were hurting that, so much that I couldn't sleep on Saturday night. My hips, my legs, my arms more than anything were stuck like this when I woke up. They were like, hey, don't worry, it's only one round. I was like, okay, like, what are the reps? They're like 300, 200, 100. I was like, oh, shit. Like to brush my teeth, I had to push my other arm to grab my toothbrush and bring it in. What's this? What's this over here? Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Different things going through your head. You're excited, but then on the other hand, you're like, "Wow, I don't, you know, I really don't want to mess this up." Like, <laughs> and then when you hear, when you think, start thinking about that, you start thinking about the negative things, and you got to push those aside. You just got to focus on uh, just getting after that next workout. And you know, you're in it to win it. You're not in it to to try to like not lose. I've never had anything that I focused on 100%, that 100% of my efforts from waking up to going to bed at night was this. That's it. So it would mean, it would mean everything. Ben Smith sits atop the leaderboard with just a four-point edge on Matt Fraser. This event is going to be fast, and it's going to hurt. There was there was no strategy to it. The only strategy was don't blow up, which I kind of blew up because <laughs> I went out I went out so hot out of the gates. I was not looking forward to running again. And again, this 400 meter run is not your normal 400 meter run. You have to go up that berm, which is a five story climb. And going up the stairs was just like a, a trudge, like push through the pee and your legs filled up and were burning and numb. Going upstairs and then climbing up the hill, things start to lock up and calves get really tight, your back gets really tight. And like in the third round, I felt like my legs were falling off because they were so warm. And a 50-foot yoke carry, that's that crazy looking apparatus there on the floor. 380 pounds. I'm like, 380, that's pretty light for a yoke. So kind of my thinking was like, pick the shortest yoke. Matt pretty much picked it up and had so much room that he could sprint with it every time. He made up a ton of ground on the yoke. Get the yoke like as high off the ground as possible. Who cares if it's swinging? It's only 380. I just want to be able to pick it up and there's no way it can hit the ground. So I can just like run with it, dump it, and go. And there is no one in sight of Samantha Briggs. The midline march for the women was 100% Sam Briggs show. And Sam Briggs is now going to lap Camille LeBlanc Bazinet. We're talking about a, an athlete at the CrossFit Games lapping other athletes. So we're talking about another athlete getting four minutes ahead of other, of other elite level athletes in this workout. The fact that these guys are going head to head just proves what kind of athletes these guys are. 
They want to win. I was like, there's one guy I have to beat. I don't care about any other competitor here. I just need to beat Ben. He looked over, saw exactly where Ben was, and actually throttled down a little bit, let Ben get ahead of him, and then just kind of hang out. He knows that he can catch him on the yoke. That's one thing I don't do. I won't look over, I won't watch. You feel where he is, you know where he's at. You hear the announcer talking in one ear and out the other. You just keep doing your thing. I was running back out my lane and he was still on the yoke, so I went dead, dead slow, waited for him, let him pass me, just to try to push the pace for him. Sam Briggs is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the final event. The engine from England will win Midline Madness. Here's Sarah Sigmund's daughter doing some damage control, trying to finish as close to catching David's daughter as possible. Jacob Hepner is gonna take Midline Madness as he gets his yoke completely over the line, but in second place, it's Matt Fraser. You immediately knew that Matt Fraser had catapulted himself back up into contention with Ben Smith, and that we are gonna be kind of in the driver's seat for the best finish that we have seen yet. The drama continues to unfold here at the StubHub Center as we learn that Annie Thor's daughter has withdrawn from the competition. Uh, heat injury. Yeah, so it's a combination of the heat and then a lot of repetitions uh, in the heat and being in it for so long. I think that's the first time ever that I've had to withdraw from something or stop something that I've been doing. It was a tough week for all the athletes. Murph in particular took its toll, and I think Annie was one of those athletes that performed below her expectations and wasn't able to recover and get back to the level that she's accustomed to competing at at the games. I'm used to pushing through muscle soreness. I'm used to going through long weekends, and I know how that's supposed to feel. And this was just, it's not the same. My body felt awful and weak. I'm cramping, like, I've been cramping all weekend. I heard on the uphill, but the rest of it was fine. It's just hot. But better than Murph. I feel okay. Well, if I feel them, I don't feel them now, so hopefully they will feel okay later. <laughs> I gotta poop so bad. So we have something behind me that we're gonna reveal. It'll be something new, something none of you have ever seen before at the CrossFit Games. So let's go ahead and reveal the rig. Pegboard. Wrestling. Wrestling style. Oh, my biceps. What was that? I was looking forward to um, more of a bicep pump. You want me to show you how to do it? <laughs> See Dave Castro do some work. Come on, I'm going to fold the f*** out. <laughs> Three ascents up the wall. Anyhow. Although it's putting things in holes, it's gonna be a bit of fun. You're good at that. <laughs> I, I like it. It's gonna be so hard, so heavy at the end of it. But, uh, I think it's cool. It'll be a fun workout, fresh. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be so fun feeling like this. I don't know if I can even do a handstand push up, let alone a heavy dumbbell snatch, or even hold my own weight on a pegboard. It's alright though, it's not like these last two workouts are too difficult. It's like nice and easy, kind of cruisy stuff. It's like it's a heavy dumbbell and we have to do an extreme do the, do movement. the most technical movements. I was worried about my biceps, but I think everyone, everyone's in the same boat with their biceps. Yeah. Everyone's hurt. Even just a little bit of a loosen up in the triceps would just go a long way. Yeah. I'm trying everything I can to be able to straighten my arms. Yeah. At this point in the weekend, my body's, I'm having to cut holes in my shoes. Affected, the nail's coming off. Everything's just falling apart, but who cares? It's just kind of <laughs> have a bit of fun out there, right? At least for me, even on like the Friday morning or the Saturday morning and Sunday morning, especially, you're sore, but like your mind is just on high alert because it's go time. You know, it's game time. It's you're in the middle of the weekend. It's your mind is getting your body ready, no matter how bad it feels, to do work. It's all right. I'm sore every day. You're sore. I'm sore like this in training too. So 
I got a train tire. Who knows? Crushing. Maybe I'm maybe I'm like a pegboard savant. Maybe you I'm like you could just be like, <laughs> one of the best <laughs> in the <laughs> world at it. We don't even know you. Nope. I'm really happy that I'm doing better this year than uh, last year. And uh, next year I can maybe just aim for the podium. Yeah. That would be nice. I think it's a, it'll be a fun, really fun workout. It should go really well. I'm just fatigued. Yeah. yeah. Watch your leg. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> My upper body was so trashed that I could not grab the bar with locked out arms and pull my body weight up. My coaches were like, oh yeah. They were pumped, it was heavy. We were so excited. Like I was gonna crush these workouts. And then all of a sudden, I go to like move my hair out of my face and it was like this. Ah, oh, oh no, oh no. All athletes eyeing that pegboard with a bit of trepidation. Pedal to the metal one is underway. The magic number 51 total reps, but the toughest three are right here, getting up that pegboard. She just lost it, slipped out of her hands. Dropped from the top of the pegboard. You can see the frustration setting in for many of these athletes. No woman has completed this event. Pegboard event wasn't my favorite. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was cool. I looked at the other guys and I was like, is anyone else like sweating profusely right now? We just watched these people not be able to complete a single rep. And they're some of the fittest in the world, and they can't get up this fucking pegboard. And this pegboard is really throwing a wrench in everyone's game right now. It's a perfect example of how CrossFit athletes adapt to things that are thrown at them. You need to be presented something that you've never done before, and we want to see how well you can handle it. It doesn't mean giving them something that's easy for them and seeing how fast they can go. It means literally always moving the bar and seeing if they can actually do it. Not just how fast they can do it or how well they can do it, if they can do it. Inevitably, that's going to mean that some people are going to fail. It doesn't mean it's too hard. It doesn't mean that it's incorrect. It means that it's the CrossFit Games. It means that it's redefining human performance. We need to find this point where athletes are um, struggling, where athletes can't do a movement, because once we find that, then we've just raised the level, we've raised the bar, we raised the complexity. We have raised the expectation for them going to the next level. Two men in the men's side have separated themselves in a battle for the top spot. It's the experience of Ben Smith against the expectations of Matt Fraser, and both have handled this test extremely well so far. The woman who has handled it the best, rookie Sarah Sigmund's daughter. She's battling with countrywoman Katrin David's daughter and Australian Cara Webb for that top spot. David's daughter and Webb have experience on their side at the games, but Sigmund's daughter has looked like anything but a rookie. I was excited, I was nervous, I was like, I didn't know kind of how to feel, but more excited for the opportunity to win than I was afraid of losing. I was aware how close it was between Ben and I. I knew what I needed to do to win. I never even dared to dream it, and I was sitting in a position that I could win the CrossFit Games. All I know is that uh, I've never tried this before, and yeah, hopefully it goes well. The fittest crowd on earth is ready to watch the fittest man on earth be crowned at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Sigma's daughter kind of gets halfway up, she falls down. It went from a wall and straight to my head, so I fell down and I had like this really big bum on my head. I peg it in, put my chin on, peg the next one, put my chin on. Our last heat was like three pegboarders. If I just pull this third pegboard climb out of my ass, I can beat Ben. And all I remember thinking on the third one is like, oh my god, it's happening. It's working. And Matt Fraser got to the rower ahead of him. Fraser has to beat Ben Smith by two spots on the leaderboard. 
you're pushing yourself through that workout, but you are seeing where he is, and you do have to know where he is. Sarah Sigma's daughter continues to just stare at that egg horn. She's going to start working her way up. Marlo Alvarez is on to the rower. And Catherine David's daughter has decided that she's not going to go after this thing again and rest up in the second event. Meanwhile, Fraser will move into third place, and he is ahead of the band that he needs to beat in this event. Ben Smith. If he lets Matt get ahead of him here, he's going to have to beat him in the next event. And Matt Fraser in the yellow shorts is leaving Ben Smith behind him. I did one snatch, two snatch, and then my ref was like on the next number. And I was like, better move it, honey. <laughs> I just launched this dumbbell. I landed right on the number. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Matt Fraser is beating Ben Smith. Meanwhile, Spencer Handel's crushing the thing, so he's going to win the event. Handel is across the finish line. Matt Fraser finishing second, and Dan Bailey gets in, and that's huge for Matt Fraser. Ben Smith will finish. It's going to be really tight with the numbers. A bad win for Margot Alvarez on Battle to the Metal 1, and now a two-minute reset. That man will have the lead by just two points. Whoever beats the other guy is going to be the fittest man on earth. This is yours to lose. It's all on you. And that's exactly the position you want to be in. All right. Don't f this up. This is it. Four days of competition. And this is the 13th event to close out the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. All Sarah needed to do was just stay ahead. Catherine. And then the parallel handstand push-up. Katra's going to go hard because she wants to get as much of a lead as she can on Sarah. Ben Smith looked unbelievable on those handstand push-ups. Matt got a little wobbly. And Ben Smith is done first. He gets all 12 and on to the road. Razor with one to go. First off, Sam was there with me, and it was just like balls to walls. This is big for David's daughter. And it's all red for Matt Fraser. Smith is done with 24. Under the assault bike for 16 calories. David's daughter moves on to the assault bike. Sigma's daughter still struggling, and now more people are starting to put themselves between Sigma's daughter and David's daughter. Matt Fraser into the rower for 24 calories, and he's going to have to set some records to catch Ben Smith whole in like 21, 2200 calories. A number of I've never seen on the screen before, and I just went full dummy. Matt Fraser, is closing the gap. You have to want to be in those positions because those are just opportunities to succeed. If I ever push in any workout like this is the time. And David's daughter moving up the challenge. Sam Briggs for the top spot. I can still get him. He's right there. Smith with a no rep, and Matt Fraser has a door to make a comeback. Everybody in the stands was on their feet, going crazy. Everybody was into this. I get up to my two kettlebells, I rip them, and go. Ben Smith is through two. He will walk forward to number four. Matt Fraser will start on his first two reps. And here comes Matt Fraser. Here's Sarah Sigmund's daughter, who could be seeing the title of Finnish woman on earth slipping through her fingers. Catcher had arguably the most impressive performance on the kettlebells that we saw out of anyone. There was no stopping there on those. When I think about it, I couldn't even feel my body. Two more reps for David's daughter. She could lock up 100 points and possibly move herself on the top of the podium. Fraser got no rep. You've seen it so many times in your head. Visualize yourself winning, visualize yourself going through that event and finishing first. Today, Superman does not wear a red cape. He wears a CrossFit game. situation where we weren't quite sure how many people were going to finish between Katrin and Sarah. Pushing for all she is worth on that assault bike. Second last year in a rich voting, and Fraser will have to wait at least another year before he stands on top of the podium. Sure, if I didn't go full dummy on the assault bike, it would have been a different story, but I did. I was dying. This crowd saluting Matt Fraser as he finishes the event. And I remember hitting the finish line, half being happy, knowing I did everything possible. Your 
2015 Reebok CrossFit Games champion is from Iceland. Dave Castro was like, the fittest woman in the world is from Iceland. I was still like, please be my name, be, be my name. And her name is Katrin Davidsdottir! When it was like Katrin Davidsdottir, there's, there's no words to describe that feeling. That's what I remember the most. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna think about the whole year when I'm training. I don't know, I just remember getting back to the athlete area, to an empty room, and it just being like a devastating feeling. Like I wanted the games to finish with like, surrounded by friends and family, like hugs, everyone happy, but it was the exact opposite. Like I finished it by myself in an empty room with nothing but disappointment. Your 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games champion is Ben Smith! My mom and dad were, and my wife, they were all like, you know, super nervous and I don't know, it was great to be able to kind of put it, put it to rest and, and finally win it. I knew I could do it, it was just a matter of time. Ben Smith is the real deal. In the nine years that we've had the CrossFit Games, only one other time has an athlete had 10 top 10 finishes in the same games. And Ben did it this year. He's a legend in CrossFit. He's been there seven times. He's been on the podium twice. It's not the end of the world. It took this guy seven years. And I've been in the game too. I think Matt is going to win. I don't think you can stop him from winning. I feel like Ben Smith, like it was just his time. Like Fraser's still gonna have his time. Coming fourth has just shown me that maybe I do have another year left in me. So, there's no retirement plans just yet. Amazing moment. That's the moment that you wanna chase for the rest of your life. It's been really cool to be a huge fan and then to be able to compete with a lot of the guys that were your heroes that you'd watched the year before do what you are doing now. I hope that there's other people out there like that that are watching and like just hungry to get out on the floor and can make that transition. The satisfaction of finishing higher than you've ever finished in your life, and it doesn't take one year to do that. It's a whole lifetime of competing and doing stuff that gets you there. There's more than meets the eye to CrossFit of the, the blending of capacities, finding weaknesses, it's a long process and it's a really low trajectory at a very distant horizon that you have to accomplish. Ben Smith personifies that. He talks about goals all the time. Winning the CrossFit Games is one of the most ambitious goals that you could ever possibly have. And Ben has chipped away year after year until age 25. That's why he's the perfect example of how you win. Things take time, things take hard work. That's all Ben Smith does. He works hard and he's been working hard for seven years plus and it finally paid off. You know, I worked so hard and that it paid off in, in such a big way. To be the fittest on earth, that's incredible to me. That's something that's only in my dream. Just the fact that I was out there with all these fantastic athletes, all of us suffering together, hey, Throw whatever you want at us, Dave, because we'll find a way to overcome it. The ceiling for what's possible is year after year being redefined, and the CrossFit Games are part of that process in showing athletes and the world who truly is the fittest on earth.
Did you memorize all these questions, or do you have? Are you looking at anything? How good does the shirt look? Yeah, classic. <laughs> well, we're on the highway, and this really nice Porsche kind of like goes by us quickly. You better win today. And then we get up next to him. I'm like, oh shit, that's Bob the Trainer. Selfie time. You better win. And so. Uh, I did the natural thing and took a selfie in front of them. Who else can say they have that photo right there? <laughs> so Bob, thank you for the selfie. It was just like every time I pulled, it just felt like sandpaper on my nipples. Oh, it hurts so bad. My nipples are rubbed raw from the paddleboard. And I decided to go shirtless. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Do me a favor, make sure my nipples are in the same direction. Yeah, slow clap in the 20 seconds that I have the lift. Boz is like, lift, just. <laughs> I get my hands on the bar and you're done. <laughs> yeah, but it was cool, everyone was clapping. Dan Bailey knows a lot about pain and suffering. He's a lifelong Cleveland Browns fan. Julian Alcaraz, get that shirt off, young man. It's time to list some sandbags. CrossFit road trip. CrossFit road trip. He's gonna come to Tennessee and see if he can hang. He's gonna take me to the mountains. It's gonna be like Broke Back Mountain. We're like deliver it's actually. I've decided that the final event to be done is just kiss a other guy in the team on the individuals. I would do it to be done. I wouldn't choose I Alex. I don't think he's a good kisser. My name is Camille leblanc Besne, and I choose fitness. Sometimes I pretend like my food has feelings. Don't eat me. I'm just a cheese sandwich. Recently, I've been told that I have the stomach of a Ninja Turtle. I don't know if that's a compliment. <laughs> I think it's the front side. <laughs> Add some meat in the kitchen. All right, Everyone all right, knows right. this. <laughs> Add some meat in the kitchen. <laughs> Whose slogan is that? It's like, is that Paleo Power? No, that's Oh, that's Arnold. Yeah. The Lucas Parker, look at that beard. It never gets in the way of the barbell when he's working out, which is so impressive. Fun fact, I think Lucas Parker actually uses Hang Power Cleans to trim his beard to the appropriate <laughs> level. Then we find out she had a broken foot. And I literally thought, okay, this woman was sent from the future to kill Sarah Connor, and she just stuck around to do some crossing because she's a cyborg. Oh my gosh, no, there's something on me. Can you please take it off? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to touch that. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, saved my life right there. Thank you, Ann. We, I was pumped for those workouts. I was pumped to freaking, those little, it looked like Mario bombs from the game Mario. That's what he looks like to me, and I wanted to pick him up, and I wanted to deadlift them. I wish I could talk to you about Tia Claire Toomey. <laughs> I really wish I could. No one knows what else Nobody is. knows anything. Goodmanson absolutely infuriated me the entire time, just because he made us look foolish as analysts. And I'm sure anyone at home that's like, oh, I saw it coming, I could have told you Goodmanson was gonna do that great. You're probably related to him or one of his immediate friends. Anyone outside that circle did not see Goodmanson coming. Someone had emailed and said, you know, the final wasn't exciting. And I was like, what the f were you watching? You know, like that was the most exciting final we ever had. These are baby carrying hips that are just totally ruined because of Dave Castro. No more babies for Michelle. Don't put that on television. If you f tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't go anywhere.